Right, so we are back in the studios after that banter, banter between the chairman of the Committee on Government Assurances in Parliament, Samuel Kujota Blakwa, and of course the Minister for Works and Housing, Kujo Ponkroma, will be you how this matter was resolved in subsequent bulletins. But with just 101 days, in fact, more exactly 100 days to the December 7th general elections, the National Democratic Congress promises to reset Ghana's economy, alleviate economic hardship, and promote good governance in the 2024 manifesto. The party's flag bearer, John Draman Imaha, promised to restore Ghana's economy through a series of measures, including a national economic dialogue, tax rationalization, and emergency measures to stabilize the Ghana city. He hopes to achieve this with the March touted 24 hour economy program that aims to boost productivity, production, and employment opportunities. The party also promises to support small businesses, women entrepreneurs, and artisans through various programs and incentives. This afternoon, we will digest the document with a member who helped draft it. The member of parliament for Tamil South, who is also the former minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, is my guest in the studio. Of course, you are welcome to share your thoughts with us via our social media platform because we are live on Facebook, we are live on X, we are live on YouTube, and of course, myjoyonline.com as we try to understand what exactly is behind the NDC's push to reset Ghana. And of course, uh, one of those who have uh, draft the document is my guest in the studio. How will I do so? How are you welcome? Thank you very much, uh, Evans. Elton. <laughs> you see, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Elton, for mm. the opportunity. Mm. I'm here to shed light. But just one minute. Uh, on what happened? What just happened between and uh, that's, is, that's, is it normal? That's parliament for you. I have always insisted that parliament is a forum where we should vent right and wrong. But right should always prevail, not partisanship. Uh, the chair of the committee and the minister owe some fiduciary responsibility to the people of Ghana. Mm -hmm. We are all holding public office. We are accountable to it. But uh, a committee of parliament, as you are aware with your long years of practice in parliament, ha is like this akin is to that uh, the high court. The, its powers is akin to that of a high court. It's important that ministers are held accountable to the people mm. through parliament's uh, committee. And the effectiveness of uh, parliament uh, itself as an institution hinges very strongly on the effectiveness of this uh, committee. Mm. Particularly for the Government Assurance uh, Committee, a very important uh, committee where ministers uh, must uh, adequately and honestly account for what they can do, mm -hmm. what they cannot do, and what their constraints will be. Uh, I'm sure it will resolve itself. The Hopefully. minister has to Hopefully. respect the chair, mm. and the chair has to respect the minister. The minister. Yeah. Now, now let's talk about the the, the NDCs by the first two, and then I'm curious to know what exactly is there to undergo resetting. Uh, Elton, maybe you are like many others who have failed to ask the momentous question: What is the state of Ghana? Mm. What is the nail of our republic? Is a country in crisis, admittedly even by the President of the Republic, President Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, and his uh, uh, running mate now torch better for the MPP, Dr. Mahmoud mm -hmm. Baumia. They all admit, they cannot deny it, that our country is in a state of crisis. In a state of crisis, do you upgrade? Do you upgrade unemployment? Do you upgrade cost of living crisis? Do you upgrade cost of doing business? Do you upgrade the growing unemployment and the growing hopelessness in our country? Certainly not. You reset. So President John Dramani Mahama was setting the tone mm -hmm. that I come to this office, I come launching this successful manifesto of the NDC, thanks to Professor Dan Subuafu and his team, Nano Yelita and all our colleagues who made various contributions and their committees. President Mahama is saying that I come to work on resetting four aspects of our national life. And what are one, these? What are one, these? to reset the economy. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with the economy? A country in crisis with debt which is unsustainable. The debt is about 600, 745 billion. 
against what was inherited 120 billion in 2017, which was described as colossal. Mm -hmm. Now you have inflation, which even galloped to 54%, now coming to 23 and coming down. You have the cost of doing business being at its highest epic in our nation's history. The cost of living, worst crisis ever in our country's history. You only can reset. So President Mahama was punctuating what he is seeking to do, one with his economic stimulus of a 24-hour economy. Mm. There were those who said that he cannot legislate about 24-hour economy, including Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Uh, that, that, that appeared to me that he probably ought to have read more. What you need to legislate is the Labor, Labor Act, mm -hmm. Act 815, if I get it wrong. And then you you need legislation it. so that if working hours is from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., you will have a shift where from 4.30 p.m. you have additional eight hours and you can have eight hours. It's, so at it's, least it's, it's already point. happening. I mean, no, some companies so, are I running 24 hours. No company, please. Yes. It starts with the reset of the public sector. Mm -hmm. The public sector must lead in providing it. I mean, security agencies must be available to protect the security of businesses who want to be able to do business. And President Mahama further announced that he will provide incentives for the private sector to partner him to grow their economy. Like what exactly? First of all, first of all, I come, I come, I, I, I come specific. Mm -hmm. For the first time, President John Dramani Mahama announced that he will establish an, a national export strategy chaired by him as president. So that is a response that what Ghana needs is expanded exports. Mm -hmm. How do we expand our ep exports? We take advantage of the economy, a typical agrarian economy which is dominated by agriculture. The MPP have failed in every enterprise of agricultural development, notwithstanding the massive financial investment into planting for food and jobs. Right. So President Mahama promises that there will be value addition <laughs> and that he would introduce manufacturing and that the twin drivers of growth will be agriculture value addition and the manufacturing sector to lead it with an export drive. Mm -hmm. I mean, Elton, have you for a moment even thought through that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and MPP will hoodwink and again in their grand style of political deception say that they are seeking to stabilize the currency with gold. Uh, if gold could stabilize a currency, why is the South African run struggling? Why is the South African run uh, 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 <laughs> not able to stand the door? they are not doing oil for And I'm for saying no. If it was a prudent policy, they would have started with it. They are the world dominant producer of gold. Mm -hmm. There's been times Ghana have attempted to take off, but at least they have more gold reserve than Ghana. Mm -hmm. Their run is doing as bad and as poor as the Ghanaian city. Mm. The answer is in what President Mahama promised. Expanded exports is the answer. But, but my question Less really is... Let's more foreign Honorable, exchange. I mean, the issue of export, I mean, this is not the first time we are hearing of this. In fact, it questions the sincerity of politicians. For example, I mean, we've been told that our economy has been import-driven from 1992, at least since we went into constitutional rule. Why every it? budget, every government promise hammered on this particular issue. In fact, if I should go through the NDC's manifesto from 1992 up until now, I'm sure I will find and I'm lines of, 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 of present, from import to export. The sincerity Ma is what is lacking in terms no, of getting it President really Mahama done. would have invested the several billions spent on planting for food and jobs, on different aspects of agriculture to spare growth. What do we have to account for it? Several billions of Ghana cities have been spent. Now we are told that there is a, a request for an emergency of 500, 500 million to help deal with the dry at spells least, in at the, least, the at, least, at least, President John Dramani Mahama is credited with the Tamni Major Irrigation uh, Development Project. The NDC manifesto further promises to upgrade irrigation infrastructure, not just in the Afram Plains, but in many parts of the country, including northern Ghana, Kamba in the Upper West region, Amwati and Prim in Central and Western region, respectively, so that there can be year round agriculture, including my own Pagaza or Sabari mm. in the Northern region, will all benefit from the NDC manifesto. So, so, so not so, just 24 mm. hour economy. Now, I, I wanted us to stay a little longer on this, especially the incentives you intend to give to the private sector. Yes. So they can play an active part in this 24 hour economic program if it becomes a reality. And I want yes, to understand yes. what, what, what kind of incentives so what are you, you proposing, what you especially do, for the private sector? What President Mahama is promising to do is that in his first 24 months, 
target to be agriculture and manufacturing. Strategic incentives will be offered to any private sector person, one who is able to make a contribution to address Ghana's unemployment by providing employment. And what kind of you, intervention you, are we you talking qualify, about? No, let it be dictated by them. For instance, you want to set up a factory in Doma poultry, or you want to set up a poultry feed. Justification for government incentive will be one. Are you able to provide jobs? Mm -hmm. Are you able to provide to the gross domestic product increase of Ghana? And are you able to export? Then you qualify for strategic incentive. So probably for the first 24 years, it will be here for agriculture and manufacturing. Anybody in that sector who is able to provide value addition mm -hmm. will be granted some incentives supported by the president and recommended by parliament. You know that under Article 27, uh, 174 of the Constitution, it's parliament that grants that. So incentives will be given. So that's why I said the twin is growers... This, is, this, is this dress in a garment of not, waivers? Not, not at all. Remember, it is not just the expanded export strategy and the expanded export council that will be chaired by the president. Mm -hmm. He also is demonstrating a commitment to reduce import. Reduce our import on oil. I mean, uh, Elton, who would take us? We are importing tomatoes and pepper. Of course. With all these arable lands across the country, we are capable of producing tomatoes and pepper. Let's support farmers dedicated to the production and export of those products. Mm -hmm. Then they will be able to facilitate export. That the NDC will do. Now, for the new patriotic party and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, it's a lost opportunity. What you cannot do in eight years, you are now promising it in 100 days and promising it into the future. No, the Ghanaian people gave you a mandate. That mandate was for eight years. That mandate, even in their manifesto for 2016, Agenda for Jobs, transforming Ghana from uh, production to taxation, said one, they will end the suffering of the Ghanaian people. Mm. Uh, Elton, uh, my tree is not good. And this election is about have they ended the suffering of the Ghanaian people? Let Ghanaians judge them. It is not for them to say that uh, President Mahama should not say reset. If he says upgrade, you cannot come and upgrade hardship. You cannot come and upgrade inflation, which is already high. You cannot come and upgrade the poor performance of the economy. You cannot upgrade unsustainable debt. He, he, All he, this he is always, he's always insisted on the fact that as vice president, I mean, he is now bidding to lead a party. Yes. He will have his own program. Yes. What is happening up here may be under the so, direction and, in civil, and the authority in of President Okufado. But he has made it clear no, that, I mean, he has, he has, he has, he has, he has, he has, Elton, he has Elton, pushed and, and helped implement no, at least 33 Elton, projects. John Mahama in cannot civilized democracies, one. if you are part of a government which is failing and you have honor, you quit. You don't wait and say that you want to fix your own problem. It's like a baby uh, uh, swimming, uh, who else must clean the baby? The mother. So the NDC is promising as a mother to come and clean over <laughs> their baby uh, uh, associated uh, filth. And they know that they have created filth. What is it that they want to do again that they have not had opportunity to do? Infrastructure. And we are saying, and Elton, you heard it on the lips of President John Dramani Mahama, and it's biblical, to whom much is given. Much is to be expected. Mm. You got over five, uh, 500 billion additional money. The Bank of Ghana, 50 plus billion added to it. Growth in revenue. You inherited ESLA, which is generating billions of Ghana cities to you. So they have no reason to fail. And they have no reason to have plunged this country into the crisis that we are. They keep campaigning on doing so. You know that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia himself had announced that Dumso had been brought to an end. Mm. This was not the first time. You remember my days of Edum Duma Dum Dum mm. We had this 10-year uh, cycle of it. But at least in terms of generation, with all the money the new patriotic party government has made, how much have they added to Ghana's generational capacity in terms of strengthening our energy sector you are talking about Gridco and others. That's about distribution. Mm. You know the scandal associated with PDS and ECG. Today, as we speak today, ECG owes Ghana gas. They are not paying. And you know, I'm minded to share a, a Dagomba proverb mm. with you. 
It is upon the death of the toad that you see is true size. But honorable, they, true they, honorable, they will tell you that true length. even though they've so, not added, they may not have added to you the 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 national demand yes. or or the installed capacity. Yes. They may not have done so. Yes. They will tell you that in the last eight years we've not experienced doing so as we did. During yeah, the because they inherited, four years, they inherited so, a country very with, severe. They inherited a country where provision had adequately been made to address our generational needs. Theirs was just to improve distribution. How come that they are celebrating that they have taken a marriage to Kumasi? Were they not the same people who condemned the American intervention of President George Draman in Mahama? Now look at rural electrification. I hear them saying that the NDC has no social intervention policy. Rural, inter, uh, rural electrification is a social intervention policy, and it has contributed immensely to the social and economic development of uh, our country. Now, take even decentralization. I had a professor uh, critique President Mahama that uh, the NDC should not take credit for decentralization. Go to Article 252 of the Constitution. Before PNDC Law 207, the NDC bequeathed to Ghana mm -hmm. a respected decentralized regime which has facilitated rapid economic development, particularly in metropolitan district assemblies across the country. Many countries across the uh, country, uh, world, have come to learn uh, Ghana's experience of decentralization. Mm. It's one of the best. You see, the way that this Assembly Common Fund is this best, it affects growth and development in every part. Of this you can't I, I heard, uh, it's not actually, uh, just, just two days ago, President Akufuado was at uh, uh, Botiano to commission a road project and also cut the sword for work to start on the reconstruction of the Temo Motorway. Yes. Now, he makes the point that in the greater Accra alone, government has constructed 915 kilometers of road. Yeah. So when the NDC talk about government is leaving, the, N the NPP uh, is leaving office with over 700 billion Ghana cities in debt, yeah. the answer to this is that you are traveling on good roads. There's been asphalt overlay in Accra in parts of the country. Your, 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 your constituents, are attending secondary school for free. The NHIS is in good stead. And so these are the answer to how much money has come to them and what they've utilized the uh, money for. Uh, and you have uh, kidney failures and kidney disease persons who cannot access quality medical care, both at Kolebu and Konfanachi Teaching and Tamale Wa Bolga Hospital. President Mahama and the NDC have promised to develop some dialysis centers in regions that doesn't have it and invest more in it in order to be able to save life. He also further elucidated on many persons who are suffering from these major ailments mm. will benefit from the Mahama Care, which will be a national uh, medical trust fund. But even, the, even now something is happening. Is no, and I'm saying... I mean, th 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 there's, a uh, Elton, th th there's a category Elton, of people Elton, who are enjoying free Elton, kidney care. If, if you had 100 billion Ghana cities, what road can't you construct in Ghana? So if you went and overborrowed, you have introduced new nomenclature into Ghana of haircut, uh, domestic debt, uh, debt uh, forgiveness, and uh, uh, committee. They are not no, they have no reason, given the quantum of resources mm -hmm. that President Akufuado and Dr. Baume have been privileged to receive and preside over the republic, including the... That's a global disorder. No, with global disorder. COVID they benefited from it. There's Ukraine, Please. which is still ongoing. Both the World Bank and in the, the IMF, East. both the World Bank and the IMF expended on Ghana, responding to the global pandemic, not less than three billion US dollars, additional resources. So it is not as if when you plunge the country into crisis, there were no safeguards. There were safeguards provided by the donor community and in particular by the World Bank and IMF. Mm. So they have no reason to have failed this country. You go onto the street and ask ordinary people. They are feeling the pinch of their misrule, their misgovernance, they are growing their corruption, they are growing their arrogance. They cannot even account to the Ghanaian people on many of these uh, issues. Remember, those were days when you, uh, at Joy FM here and many other stations, you said, Bas Brandon, NDC, scandal. Today, you have 245 million spent on games. You are now seeing arguments between a minister and a director general of a government entity of a corporation in a civilized democracy, one of them should be home by now, if not the two of them. 
Because if they are unable to explain the use of public resources, they ought not to be in public uh, service. So, so the, 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 the NDC position is that... It's the, not the NDC which provided the answers at Public Accounts Committee. Of course. It's the Director General... No, I'm, 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 I'm coming to the economy. Uh, 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 and then uh, disagreeing with each other publicly mm -hmm. and not able to reconcile numbers and in a democracy, some heads must rule. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the economy, and I'm, I just want to get into your mind. I mean, you guys sat and prepared this document. So it is your understanding or your conclusion that the current state of the Ghanaian economy is one that can be described as collapse or near collapse. Is in, that the case? In Tubura Akufuadu Zimbabwe with economic crisis. Crisis. An economy in crisis, mm. a country in crisis, cost of living crisis, mm -hmm. unemployment crisis, governance crisis. I mean, take state uh, institutions. Take Ghana Cocoa. No, so, so I just want to take, follow up. Take GMPC. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of GMPC lately? You tell Have me. you heard of Petroleum Commission lately? You have Cocoa Board. Which because they have gone to the international market and cannot raise money, have run a corner to say that they want to borrow domestically. It will be too expensive. You borrowed 800 million US dollars. How much of it have they been able to get to use? Half of it. Because as Bloomberg quoted, it was the most expensive and the most costliest in our country. So our economy is, so, is in bad so shape. No, not just the economy. That is one. I the institutions of our country. I want to follow up. I want to I'll give you the example. <laughs> I, I just want, I just want them to stay on the economy. And no thanks to fossil yes. fuel uh -huh. and the shift mm -hmm. because of environmental greenness. I'm saying that the state of Ghana's institutions, in addition to its economy, mm -hmm. have been run aground by Nana. And is this same economy that's been that, run aground yes. that you are standing on it and virtually on a promise free. What is promise free? I mean, in your manifesto, you're virtually promising everything. What what, is, what, how are you going to raise the revenue? We are how are you going to we are promise, raise revenue, we are promise revenue to, 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 to deliver on the we are promise promises that, that you have, that you have done in your manifesto? Who, thanks to the youth manifesto and the youth leadership of our party led by Pablo to say that, look, we have done an assessment that what will ordinarily affect new entrance to the university is payment of academic and admission fees. Mm -hmm. We've quantified it. It's in the region of 276 to 300 million Ghana cities. President Mahama is saying that I'll provide a grant through the Student Loan Trust mm -hmm. so that students will assess it as a grant. Virtually the in same thing, the MPP is MPP also promising. Special education. Mm -hmm. Remember, the argument was just between progressive free senior high school and free senior high school. The NDC never said no to free senior high school. Get, get the words mm -hmm. right. President Mahama and even the MPP use a word that we promise progressive free senior high school. What's the meaning of progressive? As an Ongoing. Able, as and when you are able to provide mm. it, depending upon the performance of the economy. And Elton, get it right. The free senior high school policy will be reviewed. Don't read review as cancellation. No. It will be reviewed in order for us to serve us better, serve parents better, and serve students better under President Mahama's regime. I just, I mean, what I, I, I just, oh no, I, I just, can I, I, can I learn with this? Okay, point? learn with because I, I want to, I want have to. Have you read, have you read the directive principles of state policy? Mm -hmm. I've seen ministers criticize President Mahama that he says, I will continue agenda 111. When he comes, he will continue the motorway which has been initiated. He will continue construction of school block. President Mahama will uphold and respect the constitution he has sworn. And that constitution enjoins him to continue projects initiated and not completed by the previous administration, mm. period. So he will respect that uh, uh, constitutional uh, imperative. But Elton, on education, I just, I, know, I just, you, the media, <laughs> there is a question I, you must you, ask this government. Uh, what is that? What is the state of free compulsory universal basic education? Mm. You haven't attained FQ. And you have free senior high school. I, I'm, 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 there's a quagma there. But education at the basic level. And I is said there's a quagma the basic there. Level is so the momentous question. I mean, it is a service that the education at the basic the level has always been economy free. Mm -hmm. And the tragic declaration by Dr. Baumia that he will upgrade already a country in crisis. So he's going to upgrade our crisis. Unfortunately, let me wrap up on the economy so that we can deal with, with we can deal with some governance matters. I, I just want, and I, and I guess I speak for a lot of Ghanaians who are a bit confused about the promises that, that they, 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 they are getting from both the NDC and the MPP and want some comfort. I mean, when you talk about the fact that when I come, I'll abolish the E-Levy and the rest. 
And then uh, the question really is that all the many things that you are promising, uh, how are you going to fund them? And then I hear a response that says that we are going to rationalize uh, expenditure, we are going to cut waste. I don't think these are enough see, to give uh, me the comfort uh, that I need Elton, uh, Elton, to say that the, Elton, the state of the economy Elton, or the Ghana economy will be in safe hands under the NDC. President Mahama and the NDC is pro promising to be an enabler that provides comfort for the private sector to lead the growth and development of our country. Now take E-Levy. What was the MPP's own projection? 6.9 billion per annum. They are not able to do 1 billion, or they are just in the region of 1.3. So it means that the intended impact of it is lost. And they blame the politicking no, around no, it for the, no, for the no. failure possible of the It's the no. It was not the politicking, but at least as a country, respect the political opposition. We shared with them how you could raise money, even using that platform, other than imposing a levy. So 6.9 billion, you are now doing 890 to 1.2, 1.3. Uh, in the US, again, is nuisance. So you can do away with it. Now, take a COVID levy. <laughs> it affects the private sector. Mm. And it's the same private sector you expect to lead and spare the growth of the country. When you forgive them COVID levy, they'll be able to reinvest and recapitalize. And then they can support you to address unemployment. The public sector cannot do it. Mm. You have a maximum of 800 to 1 million people on public sector payroll. The private sector can double that into two, five and this same private so that's sector will come with conditions. That's One of President them may be, may be task waivers that they, they were asked that they are giving. A great push of over $10 billion being invested in infrastructure and other aspects of the economy in order that both agriculture value addition and manufacturing will be able to lead it. Now, Elton, let's come back to the economy. You have a government which promised fiscal responsibility. You remember they are fiscal mm. responsibility. What is the state of it? It's in coma. Because They've suspended it because of since. COVID. No, because the, the, no. The, the, the COVID has long passed. The government then was no, the view no. that because of COVID, what? they needed to go beyond Elton, the, the threshold, Elton, the reason is, why that was suspended. What is their commitment to prudent public financial management? You set benchmark, you set standard. You are the fiscal responsibility. They are now announcing it as if it's exactly part of the, the part fiscal of the responsibility manifesto. council. Yeah, exactly. Since when have they constituted it? What work have they done? Could they discipline even the independent Bank of Ghana not to engage in quantitative easing? And you they said that you investigate the Bank of Ghana money. for what? <laughs> for printing money for the government? For the state itself? So that leads me to the second reset of President Mahama. With that reset, he would exact accountability from persons who have been entrusted with mandate and authority to run state institutions, state-owned enterprises, the government itself minister. He will hold them accountable mm. for and on behalf of the Ghanaian uh, people. And the Bank of Ghana, an assessment and evaluation will be done to assess whether or not they are, they are and they were in breach of their own Bank of Ghana Act. What could they do? In times of emergency, what are they allowed to do? What remedies were available to government? And then go back and, to and, and, and as no, members of parliament, you don't, have, you don't have answers to these President questions. Mahama More and time, you've invited the Bank of there Ghana government to provide some of these answers. The no, I'm not saying, I mean, the issues you are raising against, uh, 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 against the Bank of Ghana, I'm saying that as members of parliament, you have oversight. Several times, the you've invited the committee, governor to come and respond to some of these matters. Committee, you are saying that you don't have answers to the questions the, that you are asking finance, in the manifesto. The finance committee is at it. I have never been a member of the finance committee. And I do know that wherever there are doubts and gaps, mm -hmm. questions will be asked and answers to be demanded. So now you don't have, you don't have answers to these questions? Uh, I wouldn't know. We still can exercise oversight through the finance uh, committee. But your, of, your, your, your uh, members will be able of, to of, brief of you. Parliament. And I say it is a pledge we make, not just look at GMPC, look at Cocoa Board, the state. What kind of country do we want? Is this what you want? So President Mahama will reset uh, Ghana by subjecting and evaluating the performance of ministries, departments, and agencies, how much they very well optimally utilize the resources that were allocated mm. to them, and uh, maybe looking for gaps that are related to graft and uh, corruption or economic uh, crime. I wonder how I do so. You've been, you've, activity. you've been a minister first, minister for communication, minister for trade and industry, and then Minister for Employment, Minority Leader, you've been a youth leader of the end. You understand the workings of party and government. Now, when your flag bearer says that I will employ not more than 60 ministers, but me, I says 50, yes. realistically, yes. will this work? 
So, no, uh, uh, I mean, are you relying on your experience in government and no, in party? No, and in fact, uh, President Mahama has taxed the, the party and some individuals, I don't know if he has formally gotten to him, uh, Chachichikata and some others, to, uh, but as I'm saying, maybe he's yet to reach out to him, to develop the blueprint as to his thoughts as to the ministerial realignment in it. That team, from what I hear, uh, I hope that I'm not preempting it, Chachi uh, Chikata may chair a group mm -hmm. which would uh, develop an organogram that will fit into the present thinking to reduce the size of government. And you see, Elton, so now he doesn't of, know how. No, he doesn't know how. He knows. He, he knows. doesn't know how he's going about there this. There are some ministries, for instance, there won't be a ministry for aviation and transport. No, under John Mama, it won't happen. Mm -hmm. And probably he may surprise you to have a minister for foreign trade. He may, he, may have a, he may have a minister for youth uh, development and youth uh, empowerment. What he is saying is that we've done the mathematics. If you want me to share it, I can share Please with you. Ahead. You have 19 cabinet ministers, so at least 19 persons will be appointed into the John Mahama cabinet, as he himself said, within his first 120 uh, uh, days. Of the 19, uh, 16 regional ministers will be added to it. That gives you about 35 mm -hmm. ministers. There will be room for other cabinet ministers, mm -hmm. three to four. And then he will decide how many deputies he have. So he's given so, this so, framework. So, so this is it no, include deputies. And I'm saying that this is his framework. Cabinet shall consist of 21 ministers, including the president and the vice president. Mm -hmm. So 19 ministers will be appointed at cabinet. They may even have deputies. So 19 plus 19 plus 16 other ministers. There will be four or five additional ministers mm -hmm. that he will designate to allow him within his four years to reset the Ghana agenda. And I'm asking whether, and I do the, know that, whether this is and I do know that President deputy Mama, ministers as well. This is I've given you 19 plus 19 with their deputies plus 16 uh, deputy ministers, uh, uh, regional ministers, mm. to reflect the 16 regional capital. At least there must be regional ministers. Probably there will be no deputy ministers. There will still even be room for three or four ministers. And so clearly, if you go by this, if you go by this, he said, then they, they want all the ministers who have deputies. So how come Dr. Mahmoud Bayan couldn't convince Nana Dudankwa not to run 101 ministers? Because he's not the president he, yet. No, but you are part of it. Doesn't he sit in cabinet? I've been in cabinet. The vice president supports the president. And then if the president is going to run a life size of government, and Elton, let us not get it, let's not get it wrong. What is the intention and objective for running a lean government? To save public resources, mm -hmm. ensure optimal use of public resources. Not come and run 101 ministers and turn around and say that you are going to uh, uh, make it 50. So which public did you serve? Is that sincerity? Are you being candid? No. So President Mahama has a team which is working uh, in it. I'm sure he has to discuss it with the political committee and the council of elders of the party. But I do know uh, that uh, he's mentioned that uh, Mrs. Chachichikata and a team of two other persons together with the party will look at the framework of his thinking to run a lean government. Mm -hmm. And that lean government will mean reducing the size of the appointees at Flagstaff House. Mm -hmm. You yourself. Are you not amazed at the numbers? At the time you left uh, Parliament, started, uh, started working for Flagstaff House, the numbers I, I, have been I, I, I didn't work for Flagstaff House. I was a, no, I was sorry, a reporter sorry, there. Sorry, 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 Elton. <laughs> In all fairness, yes. <laughs> reporting for Flagstaff exactly. House. Haven't you seen the numbers there? The walk around persons at Flagstaff House. Your mama will sweep all of them away. Do you, do, do, and do, 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 use do, the do, number mm -hmm. drastically. Mm -hmm to protect the public purse. So what does the NDP understand of protecting the public purse? Run a large size of government. When you fail, come back and promise the people a lean size of government. No, at least demonstrable. Compare what President Mahama had as his cabinet and the size of his government compared to their size today. Again, I Compare come back. Compare President mm -hmm. Mahama's size of. You know they come to parliament with the person's uh, office of president. Right. Compare what President Mahama left and to what they have done and you have no breath for a second deciding who would protect the public purse and who will ensure judicial use of the public Do you support the, the, the proposal in this manifesto that the, the, the party will abolish the payment of S-Gratia and cut out waste and ostentation in government, especially S-Gratia? This is constitutional. Yeah, uh, I don't know yes, what your position yes. on this. Uh, uh, Elton, go through memory lane. In 2016, President Mahama met with organized labor in Takradi. Mm -hmm. 
under the auspices of the Ministry of uh, Employment, of which I had the rare privilege to lead at the time, we had discussed emoluments in the public sector generally. And it was agreed that there will be an independent emoluments committee working together with the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, resetting the public sector. Mm -hmm. And then the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission in order to make appropriate recommendations. But I agree with you that you need some constitutional exactly. amendment in order to be able to do mm -hmm. it. So part of President Mohammed's promise to reset is constitutional reforms. Within his first one year, he will set up a constitutional implementation group, CIG, mm -hmm. which will go into the recommendations of the constitutional review committee, mm -hmm. identify constitutional provisions that are entrenched, identify those that are non-entrenched and work the process. And again, it, I come back to the issue of sincerity. Yes. Press, the late President Mills yes. set up a committee yes. to do the same exercise. Yes. Came out with a recommendation. One of these is that there should be a way to amend the constitution so that the president uh, can appoint ministers outside of parliament. Nothing president was, nothing said was done about it. No, Former President Mahama was president and the supervised the country for four years. lost power in 2016. A group was put in place. I think... Professor Fianu, if you remember, a group was put in place. You see, and then Elton, uh, some of it, you needed constitutional structures. Again, reset. You have to go through Council of State. There are some of them you need some 90 days for Council of State to inform Parliament. Uh, read Article 290 and 291 of the Constitution. So he will reset Ghana by strengthening public institutions such as Cocoa Board, GMPC. You have heard about the produce buying company. Mm -hmm. All of it today, they are run in tatters. I think that it's about time that Ghanaians will give John Mahama an opportunity to govern. Mm. He has promised, and uh, you've heard Dr. Baumia on uh, digitalization. The NDC laid the foundation for a digital guide. But I was coming to that and issue. And I say nobody can contest it. So President Mahama has promised about 300,000 digital entrepreneurs job for the youth which will be run the same promise also Microsoft made by with, Dr. Baumia. and and together with one million coding which was part of our pledge between 2013 as you said in order to take advantage of ghana as business process outsourcing but elton take ghana today mm -hmm. even the telecom regime the mpp have killed the hand that lays a golden egg apart from mtn there is no meaningful player today in the telecom sector. And you blame MPP for that this? Use, that this, is, this is an open market. Which open if market? MPP, and, uh, if the M MTN has been which able to market? attract a large which, market no, audience, do you no, blame government for that? No, through regulation. Today, who is running uh, at El Tigo? Do you know? We ask for transparency. You are, you are speaking, they are speaking about a 5G generation. Uh, go to Malaysia, go to other countries where they have uh, experimented that. What has been the outcome? How much investment do we need? Because as I, it was on Joy FM 10 years ago that I said that data will dictate the pace of our telecom environment. Mm. You've seen that mm. happen. Mm. You need more rigorous investment in it, and government will drive it for the delivery of public services, e-health, e-justice. And what's your plan e to fix it? What is the NDC's plan to fix it? No, and I apart from training between the youth in coding no, apart from and then that, promising $3 billion you, for the sector, you, what, you what are need, you doing to you fix it? You need more to invest in the infrastructure, mm -hmm. do what we call the last mile effect of unsafe and unsafe areas of Ghana. There are still communities like Sonyo and Pabia in the Mion constituency that are even not connected to telephone, mm. telephony. Uh, that's, not, that's not right, because the telephone has become an emergency tool. Mm. Imagine a pregnant woman wanting to assess medical care may depend upon the availability and presence of uh, the telephone. So at least the foundation was laid. Even the word interoperability, remember, how did it emanate? If you didn't have mobile network interoperability, could you have mobile money interoperability? Come on, basic. Mm. I mean, there was an infrastructure in place. We've had the Bank of Ghana now playing a new role in that respect. And then you've seen them talk about financial sector cleanup. And Dr. Baumia is saying that President Mahama must read. I'll come back to this studio with a graphic headline, daily graphic. I hope they are listening to me. They should produce it. Business persons had asked to meet President Nana Adudankwa with a pledge that if they got 500 million 
they will be able to save the life of those financial. Yet some got more than that they were, and used the no, money for other things. No, they were turned according away. To, and I said this was daily graphic report. I'm saying that I according that to the, the vice president, today some of the, of the banks, the different banks, got more than even the 500 million Ghana and I'm saying and decided to use the money for other things rather than support, you know, investing it in the bank. I don't support anybody who takes public money and that. Somebody's in, somebody's in prison for that. And I say I don't support it. The law should deal effectively with those category of people. But I'm saying that Ghana needs to really look at its investment in the digital sector. You have one dominant player. You have one market significant player. Uh, the regulator, today the minister is more or less a minister and the regulator. <laughs> Where does that happen? Mm. So you have a, a, a telecom regime which is solely now dependent on one service uh, provider. And I think that it's important that we find ways to deal because that will dictate how we deal with other... Let me run this by you. Let me run this by you. And it's, it's a concern for a lot of people. I mean, among the, one, the, among the, the, the many things that uh, the flabber of the party, John Mahama, wants to do if elected in December, Number 13 says that he will institute inquiries or forensic audits into the following matters of public interest. The collapse of indigenous banks, uh, the, the cleanup, illegal printing of money, the $58 million National Cathedral scandal, illegal and inflated single source contract, COVID-19 expenditure scandal, PDS, a Japan ambulance papers deal, 13th African Games, Skytrain, Pualugu, and the rest. I mean, when you read through all of this, and then, Are you really looking for power to go after not, for, for, not, for, not, for the sake not, of, not you know, all. victimization not, you know, or witch hunting? You know the personam of President John Ramani Mahama. Exacting accountability he will do for and on behalf of the Ghanaian people. He will hold persons and institutions accountable to their mandate and resources made available to them. But these are all matters in the public domain mm -hmm. for which answers have not been found to nagging questions, he would find answers through an investigation of a forensic audit in order to verify the truth or otherwise of many of these issues which are in the public light. And we need to make uh, corruption a high risk uh, activity as a country. Uh, the manifesto have promised to strengthen the oversight responsibility of parliament. You've known my position on this. I think that the parliament of Ghana have not served the in public interest. Why do you say so? In the exercise of its oversight, we've reduced it to partisanship and not being thorough in raising questions on value for money and for scrutiny. And then Elton, sole sourcing, sole sourcing of contracts. You saw them in the agenda for positive change mm. when they promised that sole sourcing will be rarely and sparingly used. Now, we have been told that in other sectors of the economy, as much as 87% went through sole sourcing, that will not guarantee value for money for the tax. But it's also, sole sourcing is also part, it's also in the it's law. It's within the law, it's but the law. I, you get my words, use rarely and sparingly for emergencies mm. and to address emergencies, mm. but not every other day. I mean, look at Ekpalugu, Ekpalugu, 1 billion, 948 million US dollars. Mm. The president goes to cut a sword, 12 million dollars have been spent. When you go there, you see firewood, uh, <laughs> some firewood uh, <laughs> lying, crying for attention of fire. If you want to light it to chase uh, uh, some uh, rats or rabbits in that area, you probably will be free to do that. So what is the sincerity again in that? And then uh, Elton, one of the things we are not even holding the MPP accountable is the cost overrun of projects that have suffered as a result of debt exchange, mm. be it external or domestic. Many projects would probably would have cost Ghana $200 million. It's not likely to be $250 to $300 million. Mm. Their recklessness and irresponsibility is... And so you are going after all of these it. people? No, I'm just saying. Cost over... That's a lot of take, time take, take you take 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 interchange. to investigate your political come, opponents no, of no, using no, that no, time no. That's work not, and that's deliver not on the primary, public good. That's not a primary objective for which uh, Excellency John Draman in Muhammad is seeking uh, re-election. He comes with renewed vigor with renewed sense of self-correct, uh, having looked back upon hindsight of his own performance and the performance of uh, Nana Dudankwa, he will make a better president for the Republic of Ghana. And we are urging Ghanaians to support him uh, to reset Ghana, 
stabilize the economy, undertake necessary constitutional and administrative uh, reforms, invest in infrastructure and the twin growers of the economy, uh, agriculture and manufacturing, particularly light manufacturing. Unemployment held in 2016, January 2017, was hovering around 7.8%. Mm. Today it's 14%. President John Dramani Mohammed in the NDC described it as a ticking time bomb, a national security crisis, mm. very eminent. What do we do? The public sector, if it is not expanded, cannot absorb it. You need to grow the private sector to partner government to be able to do with it. So you see them all talking about, uh, Dr. Bawe talking about the private sector. He's had an opportunity. And then he says... The, the uh, same private sector, let's say a little longer on the same private sector. And you are, you are, you are in parliament, you're taking a strong position against you know, government business that is seeking to grant some waivers to some businesses, same private yeah, sector yeah. that is seeking to employ no, more, Elton, same private sector that is seeking Elton, some kind of waivers Elton, to enable them, Elton, you know, uh, is, scale up uh, is, the, 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 their Elton, production. Then you have, a, you, have a, you have a you have a you have a You are seeking no, to give same incentives to people under the twenty four hour economy. Sometimes you media you speak out of context. I will pay respect to the former Doctor Antonio Sayakoto when they first came to Parliament under one D one F. It was a thinking of the MPP government then that we should give them wholesale approval to go and determine who gets what under 1D1F. One mm. I had to persuade him then as minority leader to say that no, come meritoriously one by one on each. One, justifying the contribution to employment, contribution to GDP, and then where were we citing the factors? So even if you were to do an assessment of 1D1F, one mm -hmm. in Tamale South, I'm a district. Where is the 1D1F? Even in Dr. Baumier's hometown, Wale Wale, show me the 1D1F. I've seen a uh, 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 watermelon factory uh, coming up. Mm -hmm. And President Mama is promising that he will take an evaluation of the comparative advantage of the region. Take your region, Brown Half region, mm -hmm. Cal uh, 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 poultry, right. dominant industry, the youth there. Even football. But if you go to the Maran, and most of the this and I'm saying no, it would make those it's, interventions. It's, you will see collapse. And then everywhere. cashew, no, your region advantage. I would have seen a cashew uh, business tribe that he will reset, and that is a promise. But an upgrade, upgrade our hardship, Doctor Baumia. We won't bring you to come. And upgrade. Right, we'll be wrapping up soon. My guest is the uh, member of parliament for Tamale South, also former minority leader of the uh, NDC. He was a member of the, of the committee that was put together to draft the NDC's manifesto and he's been working us through some of the provisions in the manifesto. And of course, you have the opportunity, you have a question, I'll, be, I will, I'll share them with, with him and then if I have a comment, because we are live on all our social media handles, you can join with your contribution. So, I mean, the, the, there was a recent report, I'm yeah. trying to recall it, uh, which organization did it? But as a way, some reporter suggests that less than 20% of Ghanaians mm -hmm. uh, with voting right use manifesto as basis for deciding which party they want to vote for. It means that you have more people that don't even want to listen or read what is in the manifesto, but will exercise their franchise. Beyond, I mean, beyond this, less than 20 people. How are you convincing uh, uh, <laughs> the rest of the populace uh, you to? You know that you know that I'm a field person. This weekend, I'm out through Yuanyu in the Eastern Corridor, through Yendi to other parts of the country to campaign for President Mahama and a few of our candidates. I may be in New Edubiasi to support our MP uh, for the launch of his campaign and further to do a jura. So, manifesto, yes, you need it. Mm. And Elton, to answer those who have raised this 20%, just answer them simply that it is a constitutional requirement that parties or political parties shall present to the people of Ghana their intended programs and activity to improve the quality of life of the Ghanaian. This is the NDC manifesto. Mm -hmm. Beyond the lines, we will carry it to our constituents to explain to them what it is in it for them. For instance, take, uh, take roads. Mm -hmm. If you go to Pusuga in the Bimbla Nanumba district, the Pusuga community is saying that, look, we have long asked for the tarring of roads mm -hmm. within Pusuga. It's not been done. I mean, if you travel from Nakwandure, going to Bumpurugu, deplorable. You travel from Pasa, 
through a, 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 a Enquanta deplorable. If you travel even to the cocoa growing areas in the Sefi areas, there are still many more roads to fix. Mm -hmm. So we are simply saying that to whom much is given, much is to be expected. Right. The MPP have no explanation over 500 billion in borrowing, much of it as you have rightly captured now manifest in completed uh, projects. Any ordinary person could have done that given that quantum of resources available to. Honorable, we, we, we're wrapping up a few, few questions. I mean, uh, you have been following the, the works of the Electoral Commission, especially in your constituency. The voter exhibition uh, just uh, ended. I don't know what your talks are on it. Yes. And then as we head towards December, I mean, the issue's posture and going forward, what do you expect? As I've we always up? maintained that a credible voter register, an independent, impartial, neutral, Electoral Commission is a sine qua non to the conduct of free, fair, credible elections. Mm. The chairperson of the commission must work with political parties. Indeed, the commission is irrelevant if there are no political parties to work right. with. And everywhere in the world, transparency is the word. Be open, be transparent. My constituency currently led by my constituency secretary, Abbas, supported by regional secretary, uh, Salam and others, are following some uneasy movement of voters from Tamale South elsewhere. Illegal transfer. We are following it quite uh, closely. Mm. How did it happen? But you know, Tamale South is watertight. Right. We we'll follow them wherever it is. I think that uh, President Mahama looks good in the five northern regions of Ghana. I've been to every part of it, whether it's north, east, south. So what's your prediction for the elections, if I may and, put you on the spot? Uh, you know I don't predict. I'll predict in I October, but uh, President Mahama is winning. Humbling John, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Banwe in the presidential One touch. election. And, or you expect uh, a runoff? Parliamentary uh, is close now to give you some uh, numbers, uh, but we would not do uh, less than a targeted 153 uh, of, 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 of the entire 275. We should work at that, mm. even though currently we are in some region of uh, majority, but we need to open up and then close up some other area. In some areas, President Mahama is far more popular than Dr. Mahmoud Bahama. The problem there is ego. You know, and this is somebody feeling too big and somebody feeling that is more important than the other person. There are matters of uh, disunity. Have you asked about what's happening to the MPP on Wale Wale? So we are winning Wale Wale this time round. Uh, right. Honorable Abuba should be able to scale through. We have to hold them strongly in passing pay Janga area and uh, avoid them uh, having uh, uh, fraud, as mm -hmm. we saw in their own parliamentary election, Wale Wale, right. which is before the court. And then in Ashanti region, the NDC needs to work harder and not just rely on apathy. And uh, we have to work through an increased vote in that area, relying on the parliamentary candidates and getting a tighter strengthening of the polling station account from 7 a.m. to 5 Right, I get you. And, and we'll leave it here. Central region will do the swing for us. We'll leave it here. We'll Early continue year. next week. Mm -hmm. What is a platform for the political parties? We'll continue next week. The member of parliament for Tamale South, former minority leader, Harwin Adus, has been my guest as we uh, looked at the NDC's manifesto. When we return, the communication officer of the past was also joined. We're going to talk about party matters. There's a platform for them today. We'll have the MPP also take their turn. Uh, uh, the days to follow. This is the pause on joining us. We'll take a short break and return with more. Ghanaian media is silent on the abuse of incumbency by this government. You've seen parliamentary candidates share goodies mm. and even share development projects in district and in constituencies. That is unacceptable. The media must take it up. Years ago, you were honest that over exploitation of incumbency, this government is as guilty than any other government under the Fourth uh, Republic. Let's take a short break and talk to Sami Jemfi after the show. After <laughs>